is currently the regular presenter of the weekly BBC Radio 4 program, Something Understood. Sir Mark Tully spent the first decade of his childhood in India before going to England for schooling. He was educated at the Typhoon School, Marlborough College and at Trinity Hall, Cambridge. Thank you very much for that uh, long uh, introduction to me. Um, and uh, I would like to start off by saying how honoured I am to be here and to be asked to give this prestigious address. Um, I'm also honoured to sit on the same dais as these distinguished gentlemen. You've heard their names about five times already, so I won't repeat them. Um, and uh, I hope that I can get somewhere near living up to the expectations that Dr. Matthews has uh, led you to expect from me. Uh, I, chosen the I chose the title, as soon as I knew I was to come and speak to you, I immediately knew the title I wanted to use because I have been a great admirer of E.F. Schumacher um, and this year I had the privilege of uh, spending three days in the Schumacher College in Devon. And I've been a great admirer of Schumacher's because I basically believed long before I ever knew I would come here that small is indeed uh, beautiful. Um, but if I could start um, by telling you a story which I think, this being Kerala, many of you will understand. Um, it is um, the, uh, the story of uh, which happened within the church where all the orders of the church, instead of thinking that small is beautiful, thought that big is the best. And they wanted to find out which was the biggest and which was the best. And so they were sent by the Pope to go and kneel down and pray until God gave them the answer. And nothing happened and nothing happened until uh, they were all quite elderly gentlemen and their knees were giving way and they were getting more and more tired and exhausted, and suddenly um, a, a dove flew overhead and dropped a little message. And the most agile of the uh, monks and fathers and all the rest of them who were kneeling there leapt forward and picked it up. And his face fell at first, and then suddenly there was a smile on his face, because uh, when he read it out, he said, the note says, you are all equal in my sight, signed God, Society of Jesus. And as you know, the Society of Jesus is the Jesuit order. Well, I tell you that story uh, just to say something contrary to it to you, because I don't think God would have been interested in who is the biggest, because he is interested in people. People matter to him. And in Schumacher's motto was economics if people matter. In other words, the concern of Schumacher was that economics uh, have to take into concern the concerns of people, have to make people matter. And um, Schumacher saw this in the context of small is beautiful. So what I want to do is to try and say some words to you about why I believe small is beautiful and to fit them into an economic and uh, business uh, framework. Um, I do this with considerable uh, trepidation, bearing in mind on the platform here, you have a distinguished banker from the business sector and two highly distinguished economists. And, um, when I, uh, this morning, met Professor Cabra, who I had not met before, and he told me that um, he was going to be here as the chairman of the meeting, my spirits sank, because I thought, what is he going to think of my economics, I being something of an amateur <coughs> in the sphere of economics. So let's, uh, let's see what he thinks, and perhaps he'll uh, have a go at me after it's over. Who knows? Um, 
I want to uh, also start with saying something else, which I believe in very profoundly, which I have learned from India, and which I think is so relevant. And that is that I am not uh, against big where big is required. Um, I am not a fanatic for small in such a way that I think everything has to be and should be small. I believe very strongly in one thing which I have learned from Indian culture, which is balance and looking for compromises and very often looking for the middle way. So when I criticize uh, big business, big industry and that sort of thing, it does not mean that I am wholly opposed to it or see no good in it. I firmly believe that far too much of our dialogue nowadays is conducted on the basis of putting people in two opposite corners and getting them to shout at each other. And you see this every night on your television sets. Last night uh, I was watching the television. I really rarely watch it because, um, but I happen to um, be feeling uh, rather tired and I couldn't think of anything else to do, so I watched it for a bit. And there the argument got so vicious that Mani Shankar Ayer walked out of, the, uh, out of the show. He was sitting at home, but he walked out of camera shot. So please don't think that what I am saying means that I believe absolutely that small is best, or I believe absolutely that big is bad, or any of the other things I'm going to tell you. But why, does, why do Peter, people matter when, um, when you uh, think in terms of small is beautiful? What is the link between them, uh, the economics and the business? Well, I think one of the obvious links is that on the whole, small tends to be much more humane in the workplace, small businesses, small industries, tend to be much more creative places for people to work in, places where people can easily feel loyal, places where people feel that they are contributing and that their contribution is um, uh, rewarded. They become, as I say, uh, the bigger they get, I believe, on the whole, the less and less humane they are. I was uh, deeply shocked when I learned that my old organization, the BBC, had outsourced its human relations. If you outsource your human relations, that is surely an example or evidence that you do not really care about your staff. And this uh, is partly, in my view, because the BBC has become so big and so bureaucratic. When I joined the BBC, I actually joined in the Human Relations Department, and we were very, very much part of the BBC then. I think that the whole change from personnel management to HR is evidence that in the modern business, um, modern ways of doing business, Actually, the whole business of being concerned about your staff has been downgraded. Touched on today of local economics served, local economies served by small industries and small businesses, small production units. And again, one of the reasons I think why in Britain, in my own country, there are there is a big move now to try and reconstruct local economies because there is a feeling that without a local economy, uh, your community is at best weakened and can, in fact, be destroyed. And obviously, a local economy depends on small businesses and small in, uh, um, uh, providers of various service, services. If you look at small economies, it seems to me that two things are essential to them. One is the idea of neighborhood 
and again this can best be served by your neighbors producing the things that you want. In other words, small businesses. And the other is subsistence, which means people providing what the local economy needs uh, in order to subsist. And therefore, there is a danger that a local economy can become something of a protectionist economy. But nevertheless, if you have a local economy, you will, I believe, have uh, uh, an, an economy in which, uh, first of all, as I said, the businesses and everyone will be small, and secondly, there will be a sense of neighborhood and of community. And one of the things, I think, which are high mobility, are big businesses, are mono brands uh, sweeping the world, doing, and of course the whole business of the virtual world is breaking down communities. But we all by nature live in communities. We all by nature, I believe, flourish far more if we live in communities and live as neighbors one with the other. So why should uh, um, uh, neighborhoods flourish if things are small. Well, one of course is because, as I have said, people matter, and in a neighborhood, people have to matter, otherwise the neighborhood doesn't work. Another one is, of course, because if you have these neighborhood, uh, the idea of neighborhood and the idea of small, then you do not have huge, great, shops, and I know this is a controversial subject now, but um, and huge great providers coming in from outside who do not understand the needs of the neighborhood. Another very important point, I think, in small economies is uh, that they put something of a break, at least, on migration. I think one of the most unhealthy things which is happening in India at the moment, is this migration uh, from rural areas, especially into the big cities. You see in your own city of Cochin, the other day I saw a figure that Delhi, which was 3.5 million, I think, when I first came in 1965, if you take Greater Delhi altogether, is 22 million people, second largest urban uh, area in the world, second only to Tokyo. Again, if you have small businesses and neighborhoods functioning, there will not be that need to migrate. And I find when I go into villages and I ask people whether they like going out to towns and cities to work, almost invariably they say they would rather be able to work somewhere where they could hope come back to their own home at night to sleep. So these are some of the reasons that small neighbor, that, that neighborhoods, small economies with small businesses uh, would make an ideal answer. Now I say that use the word ideal because I want to go back to that concept of balance. Obviously um, we can't all uh, sadly live in a world of small villages, perhaps as Gandhiji envisaged. But what we can understand is what was the underlying motive of Gandhiji when he spoke about villages and India living in its villages. And we can try, with the help of small businesses, in urban areas as well as in rural areas, I think, to reconstruct communities. Now, what are the threats to uh, small businesses and small industries? Well, I believe that um, one of them, and I say this with great trepidation, is that economics are too dominant. Now, we can't do without economists, um, and they have a lot of wisdom. 